the house of the Lord. Amen. Well, let's rise and worship the Lord. Bring him something this morning as an offering. He's calling us to give him something in worship this morning. So let's worship him in spirit and truth. Let's enter into his gates with thanksgiving this morning and into his courts with praise. Amen. Just one word, you calm the storm that surrounds me. Just one word, the darkness has to retreat. Just one touch, I feel the presence of heaven. Just one touch. My eyes were open to see, my heart can't help but believe it. There's nothing that our God can't do. There's not a mountain that He can't move. Oh, praise the name that it makes a way. There's nothing that our God can't do. Just one word, you hear what's broken inside me. Just one word, and you revive every dream. Just one touch, I feel the power of heaven. Just one touch, my eyes were open to see, my heart can't help but believe it. There's nothing that I can't get to. A mountain that he can move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can't do. Oh, I know there's nothing that our God can't do. There's not a mountain that he can move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can't do. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. And there's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all the breathe. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all the green. There's no power like His power. There's nothing that I can't do. There's not a mountain that He can't move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing, there's nothing that Jesus can do. I know there's nothing that our God can do. There's not a mountain that He can move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can do. Oh, now sing the word.
was another in the fire Standing next to me There was another in the water Rolling back the sea Should I ever need him? How I've been set free There is a cross that bears a burden Another died for me there is another in the fire All oh, my dead left the dead beneath the water
place where you're here. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battles. And this is how I fight my battles. And this is how I fight my battles. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you.
Did you hear me? Jesus said there's a reason why I'm going away. It's important for me. Don't talk to me about staying because I'm leaving. And the reason I'm leaving is because if I don't go away, then the Father won't send the other comforter. And that comforter, he's not going to be just with you. How many of you know that if Jesus was here in the flesh like he was back then, you wouldn't be able to say, oh, looks like I'm surrounded, but I know you're surrounding me, Lord, because he might be on the other side of town. Huh? But he said the reason why the Holy Spirit is coming to fill you, the reason why the Father is going to send the Holy Spirit and baptize you as you tarry and wait on him, is that not only will he be with you, he will be in you. So that everywhere you are, everywhere you go, every battle you face, every problem that comes your way, I've got you covered. I've got you surrounded. I've got you protected. I've got you watched over. I've got you. I've got you. That's why we can sing, I'm not alone. Come on, church. You know what? Listen, we need to get, we need to get a little bit more excited. I mean, we are a spirit-filled church. That doesn't mean we got to shake, have a swing from those chandeliers, but we are a spirit-filled church. We need to stir up the gift that's in us. We need to let the Holy Spirit work in us. And we need to get, man, I tell you what, it excites me to know that Jesus has got me surrounded. You know what? When Jesus has got you surrounded, guess what? That's impenetrable. The enemy can't penetrate that. So come on, they're going to sing this again. Put him under your feet. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. This is how. This is how we fight our battles. We fight our battles. This is how. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. And this is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. This is how. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. And this is how we fight our battles. 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 This is how. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. This is how. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded. But I'm surrounded by you. It 
may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Got 
nothing is fit for a king except for a heart singing hallelujah 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 this morning our king is worthy this morning you are worthy Jesus come on tell him tell him this morning our king is worthy today. come on come on tell him break through this morning our king is worthy he's worthy to be praised today Come on, our King is worthy. He's worthy to be praised today. Our King is worthy. Our King is worthy. You're worthy of our song today. You're worthy of our song today. Our King is worthy. 
Our King is worthy. You're worthy of our song today. You're worthy of our song today. Our King is worthy. Our King is worthy. Come on, sing it out. Worthy of our song today. Worthy of our song today. Our King is worthy. Our King is worthy. Worthy of our song today. Worthy of our song today. Our King is worthy. Our King is worthy. Worthy of a song today. Worthy of a song today. So come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Thank you, Jesus.
worship the Lord. Amen. It's good to see each one of you. As you have prepared your gift of offering and tithes, that can be a personal time between you and the Lord to worship Him. He is faithful. Amen. How, how many can raise a hand to God's faithfulness? Maybe even this week, you have saw His hand upon your life in many ways. He provides for us. He takes care of us. And He's right here with us. He's here. He's right with us. Isn't that good to know that the Lord loves you and me? And He's right with us. We're never alone. We may feel alone sometimes, but just in a second thought, you can know, no, Jesus is with me. And I need Jesus. And I need you when we come together. Thank you, worship team, this morning. His presence is here. Father, we, we lift up your name. We give you praise in this place. We thank you for each person that is here this morning. God, we bring our offerings and our tithes to you today in a form of worship. In a form of worship to you, God. As Pastor Jerry mentioned earlier, we, we all walked this week different directions and went our different ways. And we may have felt almost defeated at some times because of the task that we were doing. But you helped us. You encouraged us. You blessed us. And Father, we come this morning to be a blessing. We come to worship you and offer these things up to you. In Jesus' name. You can look in your bulletin. It explains where your giving's going. There are envelopes on the back tables that you can mark if God prompts your heart to give to a certain area of ministry, whether it be alms or, or wherever else you would like to mark that. But as we bring the tithe in and the alms and the offerings, we give Him praise. He is so faithful. As you leave out today, you tell somebody of that. You speak to somebody and tell them, hey, God is faithful. There are times when we feel like we're alone, when we're not going to make it, but He always helps us. Because He is giving us a testimony of praise unto Him. Thank you, Jesus, this morning. We give you praise. Amen. Idle hands, idle minds. That's why he says, keep your mind stayed on him who keeps you in perfect peace. And we got a lot going on, and so we want to just make a few announcements here. Um, tonight, we have corporate prayer. Five o'clock. Amen. How many of you believe we need to pray? I'm going to ask that again. How many of you believe we need to pray? How many of you need to? How many of you believe we need to have a relationship with Jesus every day of our lives? Walking with Him, talking with Him, loving on Him, beholding Him, glorifying Him. How many of you also believe it's very? very, very important that we have corporate prayer time. Amen? That means all this crowd we have in here right now, we will see you tonight at 5 o'clock. 
All righty, well, listen now, September, this, this week coming up here, whether it's, whether it is um, whatever day it might be, whatever day you're meeting, it is new First Church Groups. So whatever you signed up for, please participate in that. If you have not signed up, it is still you're still able to sign up. Amen? There's room in the inn for you. Everybody in here, listen to me. Telling you a truth. This is a truth. How many of you want the truth? What does the truth do for you? Everybody in here needs to be in a first church group. For fellowship, for breaking bread, for going out and taking it to the world. Everybody in here, that's why we do it. Not so we can just fill our week up. We do it because it's needful for us to grow from immaturity to maturity. September 15th, 16th at the campgrounds, Camp Nakayo State Family Fest. It's going to be out there on the 15th, 16th. And uh, more information can come from that. But it's a family time, volleyball, horseshoes, all different types of things go on out there. On September the 17th, in the foyer, there is a Bethesda informational class at 4 o'clock. You can come out, you can learn more about Bethesda, what's going on in Bethesda, what we have, our vision, what we talk about, what we do, how you can get connected if you'd like to, how you can become a member, if that's what you feel the Lord would have you to do. Just attending Bethesda does not make you a member. Shaking our hand does not make you a member. Being baptized does not make you a member. Makes, being born again makes you a member of the universal body of Christ. But how many of you know God wants us to feel the Holy Spirit plant us somewhere where we can bloom, mature, grow, and become what God wants us to be? Amen? So we're, we're inviting you, if you have not been through that, to come out um, to be a part of that. Also, September 23rd, the women are having a pancake breakfast to raise funds for our women's retreat. 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., pancakes, sausage, bacon, I don't know what in the world the etc. would be. <clears throat> I'm going to say eggs and, okay, not that, nobody said anything. But come out and support our women. How many of you are thankful that we have a women's group? <clears throat> September 29th, there's a men's camp out. Please contact Pastor Fred or one of the uh, team members for the men's uh, uh, ministry and they can help you out with that September 29th also September 30th uh, Camp Roar a day camp ages 5 and 6 Camp Nakayo and more information will be coming and you can go find that also on KentuckyCogop.org September 25th 5.30pm they'll be Feeding America come out and fellowship and help the community in process 300 Peterson Drive Elizabethtown, Kentucky. Amen? <clears throat> A lot of opportunities to do something for Jesus. Right? Also, I want you to know next Sunday we will be um, taking members into the church. If you have been through the Bethesda informational class, then you can become a member of Bethesda if you'd like to. If you are under 18 years of age, you have to have your parents' permission. Okay, if you're 18 and over, if you live with them still, you might high five them and say, praise the Lord, mom, dad, I'm going to become a member of Bethesda. <laughs> but if you're under 18, you need to make sure you get their permission. And if you are 18 and still living at home, you still ought to talk to them. But we want you to be a part. And so there's some that, are, that have come that want to be a part. They've been through the class. They want to be a member. If you've been through the class and you're not a member but you want to, please contact Heather, either after church or at the office, give her your full name so she can make a certificate for you next week. Amen? Amen. All right, something we love to do here at Bethesda is meet and greet. Yeah. It's time for us to rise up, high five, fist bump, hug somebody's neck. Let them know that.
the same I thank the master I thank the savior Oh, I thank God so Get up, get up, get up Get up out of that grave Get up, get up, get up Get up out of that grave Get up, get up, get up Get up out of that grave Get up, get up, get up Get up out of that grave Get up, get up, get up Get up out of that grave Get up, get up, get up Get up out of that grave Get up, get up, get up Get up out of that grave Get up, get up, get up Get up out of that grave He picks me up Turn me around Place my feet on the solid ground I think the master I think the savior Because you feel my heart Change my day forever free. I'm not the same. I think the master, I think the savior. Oh, I thank God. Praise the Lord. Come on, church. Come on, let's make the devil mad. Come on, let's make the devil mad. Let's make the devil mad. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up out of the grave. Tell you what, on these days, we're going to really get excited. these days we're going to really get up listen I'm 63 years old and I got up a lot more than you guys did over here now I'm having to slow down just a little bit to catch my breath I mean, I understand not all of y'all are coordinated enough to jump up and down, but <clears throat> I thank the Lord, don't you? Yes. Aren't you thankful that he set you free, yes. changed your life, set you in a new direction? Do you know that if you're not going in a, in the, in a, good, a new direction, then you, you're not born again? Or you're backslid? Prodigal? That got quiet. I know we don't like to talk about that stuff in church anymore. But the simple truth is, is when you repent, you turn away from and you turn to. And when I recognize I'm not turning away from anymore, it means that one of two things. Either I wasn't born again or I'm a prodigal. Come on. Because repentance, and how many of you know repentance is, was not an event? It was an event. But how many of you know it just was an event? An event? Because repentance should be a way of life. Anybody in here... Anybody in here, how many people in here, you've been a Christian longer than a year? Longer than five years. Longer than 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Come on, Alvin, how long, man? 65, 70, 75, 80. How many of you, how many of you have been a Christian six months? Less than a year. A year. How many of you, been, how many of you are Christians? <laughs> Just wave your hand like this. How many of you know, no, no, I know, I know I've been born again. How many, come on. Yeah. Praise, the Praise the Lord. I guess there won't be anybody in the altar today. Everybody in here, I think, waved their hands. Now, how many of you have fallen short since the event. 
How many of you have failed? How many of you ever found yourself in the flesh? <laughs> Pastor, I've never been in the flesh. I've never committed adultery, fornication. I never lied. I never stole. I never killed. Do you know there's a lot more of being in the flesh than that? I mean, that's that either. We shouldn't be doing that. But there's a whole lot more to it than that. Everybody in here can raise your hand up and say, yes, I have. I mean, we probably, if we would be totally honest, we're in a habit of not being too transparent, though. If we would be really transparent, though, we would have to probably raise our hand that even this week, we found ourselves at times in the flesh. And we had to do what? Repent. Why? Because repentance is not just an event. Repentance is a lifestyle. That every time I recognize that I am no longer heading to like I should, I got to stop and check myself. Right? Because the Bible says, examine yourself and see if you're in the faith. I am to look at myself now I, because I am called to what I'm called to as an elder a bishop a, a, as a pastor leader walking in my gifts I also have a responsibility to help my brother but how many of you know that's not just my responsibility how many of you know it's our all of ours to help our brothers and sisters out, to not judge them, not to cast a stone at them, but to love them enough to say, come on, we can do this. Hey, you're, you're kind of, it seems like you might be kind of going to the right. Or you might be going to the left a little bit. Come on, man, let's talk to Jesus and let's get right back into the center. But first and foremost, before I can help you... <laughs> i got to make sure that I'm where I'm supposed to be operating. Right? And so I have, and when I don't practice, listen, because I'm just going to tell you, I, I'd like to be able to tell you in here that I practice repentance 365 days a year. Sometimes, sometimes I maybe am at a place where I didn't realize something or, or I'm just not paying attention to something or I'm trying to, now I know you guys don't do this, I'm trying to make an excuse to self. Anybody in here ever made an excuse to self? Oh, well, God understands. Yeah, God understands you're missing the mark. So I have to examine myself first. That's why whenever I get up here, I've already pounded self with everything I'm going to talk to you about this morning. Of course, I've taken out the things that really apply to me so that I don't have to preach on myself. I just apply things to you. It's a joke. No, I don't do that. My feet are sore sometimes after service just like everybody else's. But yet we know that we have to practice, have a lifestyle of repentance because I don't know about you. I don't want anything on my foundation that's not going to be silver and gold. I want to get it off. I, I, don't, want any, I don't want there to be any wood, hay, or stubble. I don't want anything when I go before the judgment seat of Christ and the Holy Spirit illuminates my life and my foundation. I don't want anything to be burned up. As much as lies within me. Well, in order to do that, in order to make that a part of my life, in order to walk that out, I have to have and I have to make the choice of obedience. I have to say, I'm going to serve the Lord. Not according to my own understanding. Not according to my own ways. Not according to my own ideas, or my own opinions, or what I think, but I need to live my life according to the book. Come on. And I need to, how am I going to live my life 
according to the book. That means I can't just pluck out something and say, I'm going to believe that. Pluck out something, I think I'm going to believe that. No, 2 Timothy 2.15, study. To show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Other words, i got to make sure I look into the perfect law of liberty and I've got to get in there and I've got to meditate on it and I've got to look into it. I've got to cross-reference it. I've got to look up other verses and I have to make sure that I am following the book. Because we know if you turn the TV on and listen to any kind of other things out there, if you turn on the podcast... Whatever you want to, you can hear a thousand different messages on the same subject. A lot of times it's traditions of men. A lot of times it's just church dogma. A lot of times it's just the philosophies that somebody grew up with. A lot of times it's just embedded doctrine. How many of you have probably think in your lifetime you've listened to at least 500 messages? <laughs> yeah. If all you've done is heard them, it's embedded. But it don't mean it's become a truth to you. A truth is something that can stand the test of scrutiny. We do not have to be afraid of the truth. Somebody said one time, if it was a sin 25 years ago, it's a sin today. If it was a sin 25 years ago, yes sir, it's a sin today. I've told you this before, but I've had people tell me, Pastor Jerry, this isn't the 70s. <laughs> You're right, man. The 70s was messed up. But even the 70s wasn't as bad as today. Huh? But I'm going to tell you what. God doesn't care if it's 1902, if it's 1940, if it's 1923, if it's 2023. It doesn't matter when it gets if we're still here. 2030. I want you to know the Word of God will never pass away. We may have more revelation of the truth, but we have all the truth right now. It's in that book. And what God wants us to do through the power of the Holy Spirit, through people teaching and instructing us, God wants us to discover and have a revelation of the truth. We should pray, God, where I'm messed up, get me fixed. Not my ideas. Not my opinions. But yet we're living in a time because we know it. The main problem today is not that we don't know. It's not necessarily that we're ignorant. I'm not saying there's not some things we might still be ignorant of. But for the most part, we're not walking right, around going, I just don't know what to do. We're not ignorant. It is just simply this. If a church... If the church is out of whack, if a person is out of whack, it's out of defiance, not ignorance. You cannot go to church for six months and then walk around in total ignorance. Everybody that comes to church knows that in order for us to follow after Jesus, after we've had our event, after we've had our event and we've been born again, everybody that's been to church at any length of time knows that you can't just look back and say, oh yeah, I had that event, but all your walk is contrary to that event. So what am I doing? I have to be changed. How am I going to be changed? How do I, am I going to be transformed? The Bible says I'm transformed by the renewing of my mind so that I can prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. I'm being changed into His light, not my idea. I'm trying to get rid of that mess. Right here, man, when I was 18 years old, I had a lot of mess. Anybody else had a lot of mess? Man, I had a lot of mess. You know, if you were born into the uh, you know, church and your parents went to church all your life, maybe, maybe you didn't have near as much mess as I had, but you had your mess. You had things. You had, you had stuff, because we're, we're, we're affected by how, how we're living in life, what our families are like. 
How many of you know you can be affected by your family life? Huh? If you're living, my, my, my family life, my older sister's here. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that older part. But my sister is here, and, and, and I'm so thankful that she lives here with us now. Yeah. I'm not thankful how she got here by her husband passing away, but I'm thankful she's here. She knows I love her. But in our household, it was chaos. In our household, man, it was fighting and yelling and screaming and cussing and cursing and swearing and all kinds of garbage going on. There was fights. I've, I, I, at 13 years old, I was awakened at 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning in my bed, sleeping, having to go to school the next day. And I was, I was awakened out of my sleep, startled. And I got up and I walked into the kitchen. And my stepdad had my mom by the neck, with it, with it pinned up in the corner like this. And he had his fist drawn back, getting ready to hit her. Which was not a rare thing that they would fight. Throw things, knock things, crash things, all kinds of stuff. And at 13 years old, I had to say, whoa, you may kill me, but if you try to do that, I'm going to hurt you. Chaos. Well, I want to tell you what, when I gave my heart to the Lord 18 years old, that just didn't all vanish. I had all that stupidity still in there. I didn't know uh, only family life I knew anything about was my grandparents. Thank God that they gave me an idea of what it was like. And so there was still selfishness in me. There were still things in there that I felt like, you know, well, when I got married, she's going to do the things that she needs to do to do what? Serve me. I, I had all kinds of garbage in my mind. I knew there was a God, but I didn't believe in all the things that we talk about right now. So I had a lot of junk. Well, you, you need to know that if you come to Jesus right here, you don't hold on to all that junk. You begin to have a relationship with Him. You talk to Him just like you talk to a friend. You communicate with Him. You ask Him and talk to Him about things. You discuss things with the Lord. Do you discuss things with the Lord? I discuss things with the Lord. Sometimes the Lord is quiet when I'm talking to God about, you know, God, I'm so stupid. I can't believe, God, that I still have that running around in here. And God is silent. And I'm like, okay, God. But what, God, what, what do you do sometimes when you're silent? You're agreeing. God's agreeing with me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. You're acting pretty ignorant right now. We commune with God, fellowship with God, have a relationship with God. And we pray and we get into God's word. Why? Because the Bible said we're sanctified by the truth. His word is truth. Yes. If you're walking around today and you just can't get away from some things, you need to ask yourself, are you in the word? I want to tell you something. I want to make a bold statement today that may just knock some of you down. But here's the truth. Here's a bold statement. If you pray and have a relationship and intimate with Jesus every day of your life, and you are in the Word, I'm going to tell you what. You can't act some of the ways that we act. You can't be caught up in some of the things that we're caught up in. You can't have the mentality that a lot of people in church today have. Come on. Because you know the truth, and the truth is doing what? Setting you free. So we can't be defiant. It's a choice. Reviewing from last week, it's about willingness. Am I willing? Do I have the right attitude? It's really about attitude of heart. Somebody said one time, well, I just can't help myself. I go up to people a lot of times and I'll say to them, I'll say, hey, you know what? Do you think that's really good vocabulary? I'm talking about people I'm in relationship with, not somebody on the street. How many of you know people that are on the street? I don't go up to them. You don't go up to them and say, hey, you know what? You should stop doing that. You, just, you don't have a relationship with them. They're going to they're gonna look at you like, you know, you're just a religious fanatic. But I have a relationship with some people, and some people don't use very good vocabulary. And so I will say something to them about, you know what? You, you really ought to stop saying that, talking like that. You know, we as Christians shouldn't walk around cussing. Did you hear me? 
It's not, I'm not saying that it's a heaven or hell thing. It's pathetic vocabulary. And if, you, if you're still sitting here saying, well, I'm mad, so I just can't control myself, then that just goes to show you right there, you don't have an intimate relationship with Jesus. Because I can't walk in intimacy with Him and be cleansed by His Word and still fly off the handle every five minutes. But you got people that are, in, that are Christians that they say, well, that's just, that's just words. I, I just, I don't know, it's just, I've always done that. Well, you want to know something? Listen, my vocabulary before I became a Christian was horrible. It was awful. But God helped me put that away. God helped me to see that that's wrong. It's about a willingness or an attitude of heart to lay aside every weight and sin that does so easily beset us. Not make an excuse to carry it around. It's out of obedience that I do the things that I do for God. The issue is not what does God want me to do. How many of you know God wants us to walk in holiness? We are holy because He is holy. It's not my holiness. It's not my righteousness. I am holy because He that is in me is holy. I am righteous. I can raise my hand up today even though I know I'm not perfect. And I can say, I am righteous. Not because I'm always right. But because the one that's in me is right. And if the one that is in me is right, and I am walking in obedience to him, I won't do things that are unright. Amen? I will walk upright before the Lord. He didn't dangle a carrot out in front of us saying to us, well, I hope you can walk right. No, He wants us to walk by faith, to live by faith, keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. And when we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, it doesn't matter the circumstances or the people, we can still walk right. It's not about... Not knowing what he wants me to do, but am I willing to do what God wants me to do? Amen? Amen. A lot of people want to blame the church. Why do we do the things that we do? How many of you think that we have all the things going on here at Bethesda just because we feel like it's important for us to keep you as busy as we possibly can? Okay, thank God nobody raised their hands. Either you're scared to raise your hand like I would point you out or... You really don't believe that. No, you know why? We, they're, they're called spreading the table. It's called sitting down at the banqueting table, giving people watering holes, giving people opportunities to do what? To grow. We have first church groups during the week. We even have one now. Come on, Patty and, and Laura, raise your hands and shout hallelujah. We even have one right now on Tuesday. Day. Tuesdays. For you people that say, well, Pastor Jerry, I would go to group, but I can't drive at night. <laughs> well, we just eliminated that excuse because now you don't have to drive at night. You can go during the day. Pastor Jerry, I'd love to go to group, but you know, by the time I get home, by the time I change my clothes, by the time I eat, I just can't get there. And you know me, I don't want to come late. <laughs> Woo, that's awesome. Now you, guess what? Now you don't have to. If you're off of work on Tuesday, you can go. Pastor Jerry, I'm older. After I get around all day long, my bones just don't operate the way they used to. I want you to know my bones don't operate the way they used to first thing in the morning. I don't have to go all day. Right away when I'm throwing my leg, I mean I'm throwing my leg out of bed. My body is telling me, "Woo! it just ain't what it used to be. I don't know why you think it's okay for you to laugh so hard. <laughs> but I do understand that. Sometimes, I mean, when it gets 5, 6 o'clock, I tell you what, I'm ready to chill. If I can. 
Well, now, if it, if you, but you don't have to wait till five or six o'clock. During the day, man, you can go when you're still fresh. There's no excuse. We can only set them out before you, though. Man, we have every man a warrior cultivating holy beauties on Tuesday nights. We have school of ministry on Tuesday and Thursday nights. We have youth. On Wednesday nights, and we also have children's ministry every other week during the month on, on certain days that you can have listed. And so we have those things. Why? Because we are here to serve you. And we're here to get you from infant to maturity. And I'm telling you, you're not going to get there by just being here this morning. You say, how many times, if you're here five more years, how many times are you going to say that? Because I'm sure you've said that a thousand times or more since you've been here in 13 years. And I probably will say it another thousand. You know why? Because it's the truth. The truth. So how do I cultivate this willingness to obey? It's this obedience through, it has to come through intimacy. It comes through relationship with Christ. Obedience flows from a relationship. Jeremiah 29, 13, what's it say? And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Obedience is a choice that we make. It's all about a relationship. If I have a relationship with Jesus, guess what? I want to do Jesus' thing. Hello? If I'm in a relationship with Jesus, I want to do Jesus' things. Hey, hey, we're having a fellowship over here on Monday night, 630. Come on over. If I have, if I have a relationship with Jesus, I want to do Jesus' things. Are you going to eat? Yeah, I'm coming. John 10.10 10 tells us, though, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We know already the enemy is out to kill us. We know already the enemy is out to steal from us. We know already the enemy is out to destroy us. And listen, he knows he can't kill, kill you. Do you know the enemy cannot kill, kill you? I, I can see already there's some blanks there. Like, what are you talking about? The enemy cannot take your life. It is appointed unto man once to die. And last time I checked, only God's in charge of when I'm leaving this earth. Not the devil. Oh, Pastor Jerry, if I go jump off a building, you mean to tell me I won't die if I jump from 55 feet in the air? You, if it's not your time to go. Now, don't do that stupid thing just to try out God because you could be paralyzed from your neck down the rest of your life. But God's in charge. The thief comes to steal. What's he trying to do? He's trying to take away your life. He wants to affect the quality of life that you have. He's trying to affect the quality of life that you have. He's trying to affect the quality of life that you have. He wants your life to be as much drama, as much confusion, as much strife, as much difficulty, as much poverty as he can possibly throw on you. He wants you to walk in stress and anxiety and fear and doubt and unbelief. Come on. He wants to throw, he wants to steal and kill and destroy. What's he trying to steal from us? He's trying to steal the joy of the Lord from our life, which is our strength. Yes. He wants to sap the joy right out of you by sucking your life dry of the life source of God. That's why Jesus said in John 15, I'm the vine. You are the branches. My father is the husbandman. If you're attached to me, then the life of the vine is flowing through you. And because the life of the vine is flowing through, the, through you, you will be fruitful. Come on. 
Not only will you be fruitful, but you'll bring forth abundant fruit. And Jesus reiterates that here in John 10.10. He says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I... I have come. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have life more abundantly. Why in the world would you settle for a mediocre life? Why would you be willing to allow the enemy to steal abundant life from you? I'm telling you what, listen, this is the truth. Listening and being around some Christians... If I was somebody in the world, I wouldn't want nothing to do with it. Woe is me. Matter of fact, it's more like, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. You didn't know I could sing, did you? Some Christians, it's seriously. I don't understand this. Anybody ever had a bad day? Yes. I, I've had bad days. Yep. I'm going to tell you what, on those days when I realize, <laughs> this ain't good, I hide myself. Right. I don't get out around the world and start singing this song. Deep, dark depression, excessive misery. <laughs> if it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. <laughs> you picked a fine time to leave me, Lucille. <laughs> I, I'm just going to tell you something. Listen, Christians. I don't understand that mindset and mentality. I don't understand that life. I don't understand a life that just seems like it feasts on drama, 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 drama. Drama, 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 drama. I'll tell you what, I, don't, I, I understand totally why some people walk in anxiety. I'd walk in anxiety too if every time you turn around, drama, 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 drama. Oh, you know what? Things are looking better. Here, let me throw myself into some more drama, 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 drama. Come on. Jesus said it. I, I, I'm just quoting the scripture. I have come. That you might have life and have it more abundantly. I have come. Not that you should drag in. Not that you should crawl in. I have come that, man, you should dance in. You should run in. You should celebrate in. You should walk in with your head held up rejoicing and repraising and glorifying the Lord. Why? Because I choose to. I choose to believe God. Whose report are you going to believe? Who do you have a relationship with? Well, Pastor Jerry, I've got a relationship with God. In other words, apart from a relationship with God, they cannot be the people of God. It, apart from the relationship with God, we cannot be the people of God. And if they are not going to keep God's word, they're not going to have life. Are you listening? Am I getting this across all right? Are you understanding me? If you don't, listen, it's not a matter of me saying it. It's not a matter of me judging you. If you don't have a relationship with God, and if you don't have a word life, then you're not one of His. You're not going to have life. You're not allowed. He, he may be in you, but there's a difference in him being in you and you being in him. If any man be in me, do you notice how he didn't say there, if I'm in you? He, he was already taking it for granted that he, they knew he was in them. Why? Because he's talking to Christians. He's writing to the church, but he says to them, if any man be in me, it's about being in Him. But when I'm not in Him, it's, it is. It's deep, dark depression. Excessive misery. And, and Christians have allowed themselves to live that kind of life. Why? Simply because they don't want to be obedient. 
We cannot be passive about this. The relationship with Jesus is not about being passive. Well, Pastor Jerry, I just sit back and let Jesus do whatever he wants to do. That sounds pretty spiritual, don't it? Tell Pastor Jerry, I just kind of hang out here and, and hang out and wait on Jesus. No, no, Jesus says, Jesus didn't say, he said, now when you've done all that you can do, wait. But Jesus tells me that in order for me to get to where I need to get to and to be what I need to be, i got to walk by Walk, 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 walk by faith. Live a life of faith. Look to the author and finisher of my faith. Not stand by and just play spiritual like I'm going to sit back and wait. The enemy's going to devour you. He says, he says the, the, the enemy, the devil, and Peter, he says, the devil, like a roaring lion, he walks about seeking whom he may devour. You know who he's walking about seeking? He's walking about seeking after people who don't have a relationship with Jesus. He's walking around seeking people who don't have the sword of the Spirit. He's walking around seeking people that are sitting idly by, trying to act as though they're super spiritual beings. I'm going to tell you what, you, he will devour. If you want to put the devil in his place, you've got to take a hold of your intimacy with God and take a hold of the Word of God and put your hands all over him and cast him down underneath your feet. Because that's what God says I can do. But you can't be passive about it. Passive faith is I believe. Did you hear me? Passive faith says, I believe. How many of you know it's important to believe? How many of you will also raise your hands and know that even the demons believe? Passive faith is, I believe. Well, the Bible says that it's not, it's not enough. You've got you to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Action has to come about. Why? How are you going to know that I believe? I'll tell you how you're going to know that I believe. I'll tell you how you're going to know that I have faith. You're going to know I believe and that I have faith by my works. You're going to know that I believe and have faith by just coming around me. You're going to know that I believe and have faith by talking to me. Because when you talk to me, you're not going to hear seven hours of the molly grubs. Is that a real word, or is that just a hillbilly term? Okay, thank you, Kayla. I got my little group over here that tries to keep me straight. They're my wordsmiths. That's why, that's why, they, that's why you hear uncontrollable laughter at times <laughs> over here, because I have made up a new vocabulary word. And these guys, these guys are over here, and Heather... And Anthony Booth, they don't miss not one of my mistakes. They have them cataloged that they could make a reel. And if we put it on some platform, I could become wealthy, I think. I believe, therefore I speak. I believe, therefore I act. Don't come and tell me you believe in something and you don't do it, though. Don't come and tell me you believe in about having a relationship with God, but you don't have any time spent with the Lord, quiet times and, and times all during the day and walking with Him and practicing His presence. It's not going to work. That's why you're in a mess. It's not about that. It's not about that. It's about something different. Something more. I heard somebody this week say something that I thought was really good and they weren't even it wasn't even talking about Christian things but yet I thought it was interesting enough that um, I wrote it down and of course like I do I expound on this a little bit 
There's four areas, though, that we have to look at when it comes to this building a relationship with God through intimacy. The first area is time. If you're going to have a relationship with anybody, it's going to, it's going to come off of time spent. Time spent. You have to... This is kind of hard because I, 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 because of busyness sometimes, not desire, but busyness sometimes have to try to make time to spend with Sarita. Not because of me, because I start chilling about 5.30, 5 o'clock, 4 o'clock. And then the only thing I respond to is calls and text messages. Just kidding, unless I have to go do something. But she's busy. So we have to make time, quality time. If, if, you wanna, if, you want to, if you're going to have intimacy with God in your schedule, how many of you know we get busy? Yeah. You have to start your day off before you get busy making time for God. So that you can have that thing with God all day long. Time, have I been that long? <laughs> Lunchtime. <laughs> Somebody's calling somebody right now. Hey, where do you want to go to lunch? Can't go anywhere right now. The preacher's still running off at the mouth. <laughs> time. You have to have time spent with God. And you have to, you have to guard that time. Listen, do you, have you ever noticed that when you say, you know what, I'm going to spend this time every day with God. Do you know that the enemy comes at you like a flood with stuff? Tries to get your mind. You know, you're going to have a quiet time with God. You get your little prayer room all set, your prayer closet. And man, you get your journal and you're all ready. And you got your word that you're going to focus on in that journal. And you're going to sit down and you get in the closet and your mind goes. Shoo, shoo, shoo. The devil puts every little thought he possibly can run through your head. You have to be purposeful about this time with God that can carry you. And you can dwell on it and focus on it your whole day. Another thing that you have is talk. You just cannot have communication or a relationship without communication. You cannot have a relationship without talking. And I'm not talking about you doing all the talking. It's a two-way street. There's some people, some couples, they don't have a relationship because the husband does all the talking or he don't do any. Hello? You say, you've been in my house? My wife talks all the time. Well, she's trying to communicate with you. We have to communicate with God. Man, I believe God talks. Do you believe God speaks? I believe God speaks. Third thing that we have to do is we have to think. Think about God's goodness. Think about His gifts. All the time we have to think about all the things that God is doing for us. Because when you begin to think about all the things that God has done and is doing in your life and will do, you can't help but be thankful. Yes. Train yourself to hear His voice in the midst of the noise. Do you know that in the midst of noise you can hear Him speak? Then the fourth thing is trust. Without trust, without trust, you don't even need to talk about obedience because you will not obey somebody whom you do not trust. You will not do it. If you do not have trust, you will not obey somebody who you do not trust. And trust only happens through relationship. Tim, right? I'll get it. I know I will. I won't even, one of these days I won't say right. <laughs> Tim has been coming here about maybe a month. Tim looks at me as a minister of the gospel, and, and from that position, Tim respects me. But Tim's not respecting me out of relationship. Because as of right now, we don't have one yet much, except for church. We will. But right now, we don't. And so if I was to tell Tim, we don't have a relationship. But if I was to tell Tim to go do something, Tim, Tim might say, you know, I don't think so. I don't know, dude. I don't think I'm going to do that. 
But you give Tim and I a few months. Now, of course, we're not talking about me telling Tim to go do something that's out of whack. Okay? But you give us a few months, and I might say to Tim, Hey, Tim, would you mind going over there and doing that for me? Yes, sir. I sure will. You know why? It's built out of relationship. And Tim begins to trust me that I'm not going to tell him something, not going to send him to do something that's going to get him in trouble or mess him up. We, we try to get people to do stuff and listen to us all the time, and we don't even have a relationship with them. They're not going to listen to us if we do not have a relationship with them. Hello? We have to have, that's all birthed out of a relationship. Well, when I have the right relationship with Jesus, when I have the right relationship with Jesus, I trust him. I trust him. I hold on to him. I believe him. I know he's not going to fail me. I know he's not going to give me any kind of serpent if I'm asking him for bread. I know that when I seek after his face, he is going to do for me exactly what I need. Amen? In other words, Moses told them, choose life. Choose life. Do you, how many of you know that it's not a decision to make if we're talking about, when we talk about life and death, if we're talking about literally being killed or I'm going, I am want to live. So we know that Moses wasn't saying, okay, here's your choice. You go over here and jump into that big hole right there and die or you can walk over here on the, on the bank and live. How many of you know that's not what he was talking about? He was talking about in a context of God. He was talking about in all the truths that he had laid down to them. He was talking about the laws of the Lord. He was talking about the things of God. He was talking about all the things that they knew. He said, before you this day, choose life, quality, or death. I, I, I can't figure out why we as Christians so many times are choosing death and not choosing life. Why? In other words, apart from a relationship with God, they cannot be the people of God. If they are not keeping the, the things of God's word, then they're not going to have any life. We can't be passive about this. We have to move into and leave it to the things of God. We can't be passive and just leave our circumstances the way they are. We have to move on in God's presence to be what God wants us to be. We have to choose. Choose life, Moses says. Choose life, not death. What are you going to do today? Are you going to choose? Even though it might hurt, anybody ever chose God and it hurt? Chose to do what God says, but it hurt a little bit? Huh? Choose God. Choose God. Choose life. It's set before you. A table is spread. Here at Bethesda, the table is spread. What are you going to choose? Do you want to stay immature and weak and feeble? Or do you want to grow up and become strong in the Lord and in the power of his might? You don't have to stay feeble. You don't have to stay immature. You do not have to stay weak. You do not have to be a victim. You do not have to sit where you are and watch the enemy devour your goods and your family and your health and your strength. It is a choice. Choose life or choose to sit where you are and shrivel up, spiritually speaking. Or you can turn from your ways. Following God and choosing life. Get connected back to the vine. Choose Christ and let the life of Jesus flow through you. 
in a way that you will bring forth abundant fruit. I am telling you right now, if you make a conscious decision, I'm not just going to sit around and be passive. I'm going to press in and follow God. Your life will change. Your life will change. But if you keep just going through the motions and stuff, death is at your door. Which one do you want? What are you going to choose? Stand with me this morning. What are you going to choose? What are you going to go after today? Because it's your choice. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Focus your eyes on me, Jesus says, and I'll keep you in perfect peace. Trust in me with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. And I will direct your path. I mean, we can rattle off, rattle off, rattle off Scripture after Scripture. We know it. We know it. We know things like in Romans 8, if God is for you, who can be against you? If you walk in the Spirit, you will not obey the lust of the flesh. If you lay yourself down as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service, He will make you a witness to those that are around you. If you follow Jesus, He'll give you abundant life. We were sitting around yesterday afternoon a little later, and Sean and Michaela, myself, and Sarita were talking. And I I said, as I sit and a lot of times and think about my life, man, I'll tell you what, I've had some rough, Sri and I have had some rough road to hoe. I mean, there there was a portion of our life where, you know, we were trying to live on $550 a month and pastor a church. I'm going to tell you what, even back in 1983 or four, that was not much money. But I'll tell you what, she'll tell you if she was in here, man, we were happy. We were on on the battlefield for our Lord. And when I look back at all the battles and all the struggles and all the things, when I look back at all the church stuff, how many of you know if you've been around church very long, you've got some church stuff? God told us, God told me and Sarita a long time ago, and I believe this, the elders believe this about Bethesda. Man, we're going to be a place where people that have been wounded and hurt can come and find peace and rest and healing. We're not judging people for where they've been or what they're doing. We're not judging people for where they are. We just want to embrace them and love them like Jesus loves. But I'm going to tell you what, I've got a lot of reason not to be in church today. A lot of church hurts, a lot of wounds. Somebody was talking about somebody having a file on every member of the church, everything they ever did to them. And they'd bring it back up whenever they needed to. (laughs) I said, dude, I could have five filing cabinets. We all could, if you've been around very long. This one said this, this one did this, this one treated me this way, this one acted this way, this one did this to me. The church ostracized me because I wasn't perfect. Man, we've all got them. Wounded and hurt. And Sarita and I have went through our share of sorrows and went through our share of cares and and, and, and had diversity and problems and issues. I've not been the perfect husband the first 12 years. I'm not perfect now, but the first 12 years I really wasn't. I was doing my thing and she was serving me. That's not a good husband. We've had difficulties. We've had issues. We've had problems. I've had kid issues. I I didn't always agree with my children. But they did. But I was telling them yesterday, not rehearsing all that stuff, but I was telling them yesterday. But you know what? I look back on my life and I've had the greatest life. I think of what I grew up in and I think of what God did with me from 18 years old until now and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, thank you Jesus. I can't believe, God, all you've done for me. And even though there's still circumstances, even though there's still people that sometimes 
try or test you, I want you to know I wouldn't trade what I have right now for all the money in the world. You can't pay me enough to go back. Why would we choose death? Let's choose life. For me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to follow after Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We're going to press in. We're going to stand up. I'm going to tell you right now, it doesn't make any difference what comes up. It doesn't make any difference what happened. Jerry Westerfield is going to do everything that I can by the grace of God to finish this race well. In faith, following after him, and choosing life. I want to choose life. But it's an everyday, moment-by-moment experience. Where are you at? What are you choosing? Are you choosing to sit around every time you get a chance Woe is me, living on the past, uh, hurts and wounds and cuts in your heart because of what happened to you yesteryear. We all have those things, but God's got healing balm. He can heal you this morning. Do not sit back. Don't take yourself and allow yourself to have a lesser life because you're choosing the wrong things. Choose life this morning. How many of you will come up here in the front and choose life this morning? You'll lift up your hands to the Lord and you'll say, Lord, I'm choosing life. Lord, I want to be obedient. Lord, I want to be a living sacrifice. Lord, I want to serve you. Lord, I want to be the leader. I want to be the person that you want me to be, God. I want to be the Christian. I want to be the man. I want to be the woman. I want to be the teenager. I want to be the young person, God, that you want me to be. I want to choose life. I want to choose life, not death. How many of you will press forward? How many of you will come forward lifting up your hands to the Lord? Talking to God. Saying to the Lord, here I am, God. Use me. Here I am, Lord. Change me. Here I am, God. Make me what you want me to be. It is a personal choice. Choose you this day who you will serve. Choose you this day who you will serve.